A new year can be the perfect time to reassess spending habits and set new financial goals. But that task becomes a little challenging if equity and crypto prices are falling all around you. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and Cardano are now all down 34-60% to 60 off their all-time highs. After a brutal sell-off on January 10th, the crypto market has since stabilized. Industry watchers know that crypto can soar or plunge in a flash, despite how good the short-term prospects appear. Hi, I'm Kate from The Motley Fool, and I spoke with Daniel Felber about the three steps to take if the crypto sell-off isn't over. So I think the first thing is you want to try and achieve your desired crypto allocation. So allocation is one of those things that we don't talk about enough, in my opinion. We talk about selecting good cryptos to invest in, but allocation can very quickly exaggerate gains on the upside and also exaggerate losses. I think that it's important to kind of reassess your crypto portfolio and make sure that you're allocated the proper percentage that you want to be. So for most investors that are just getting their feet wet in the industry, it's probably less than 5%, you know, maybe just 1%, 2% into crypto and probably the big ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Brothers that are maybe younger, have a longer investment time horizon or a higher risk tolerance, maybe they'll go higher, 10, 20%. But if you find yourself 30% plus invested in crypto and the market's crashing all around you, you can accidentally have a lot worse performance than you even meant to. And that is truly a terrible feeling and you wanna to try to avoid that as much as possible. Okay, so let's say that we've adapted our allocation. What's the next step to mentally prepare for a rough time in the crypto market? Peter Lynch, one of my favorite investors of all time, always said it's important to know what you own and, and why you own it. I think if you can't explain to a friend why you own a stock or especially a speculative investment like an altcoin in crypto, then that's kind of a red flag because what's to stop you from not selling it if the valuation exceeds the fundamentals or panic selling it when everything's crashing around you. The easiest way to simply avoid that, I think, especially for investors new to crypto, is just to stick with the two industry leaders, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Um, they both have solid fundamentals and they're going to benefit from the tailwinds of the industry. So if crypto truly crashes, then there's a good chance that a lot of the altcoins will, will go down more than, they're not blue chip cryptos that's uh, reserved for stocks, but they're certainly kind of seen as the more stable cryptos that have persevered through different crashes. I also think that people typically lump Bitcoin and Ethereum together, but to me, the investment thesis for each of them is completely different. I think that Bitcoin is, it, it's intended to be stodgy and kind of boring and have this fixed supply of 21 million fungible tokens, and um, it's really just seen as a store of value and hedge against inflation that's arguably better than gold long term. And in the US, it's a little bit hard to see the true utility of Bitcoin because we have arguably the best fiat currency in the world in the US dollar. But in other countries where their economies are more unstable, Bitcoin can be one of the best stores of value, especially because opening US dollar denominated checking accounts pretty impossible in a lot of those places. So Bitcoin is kind of this safeguard of, of wealth that because it has a fixed supply, because it has scarcity, I think it has intrinsic value for that reason. Ethereum is totally different. It's more dynamic. Its value is derived from what can be built on its platform. So Bitcoin's more of what it can safeguard and Ethereum is more of what it can do, all the apps and projects that can be built on it. So. I would definitely categorize Bitcoin as more of a value play and Ethereum as more of a growth play. But again, I think just sticking with those two industry leaders is the best way to kind of know what you're getting into in case the market keeps crashing. So it seems like a lot of this is focusing on a long term perspective, knowing your investments and why you invested in them. So what would be the third and final step in preparation? I think what can happen, especially during a rapid sell off the old saying is the market goes up more than it goes down, but it goes down faster than it goes up is you can quickly find yourself wanting to take action, wanting to do something like the old human impulse of when we're scared is fight or flight, right? Like you want to act. But in reality, the best decision is usually to do nothing. Um, in fact, if you would have bought the S&P 500 at like the peak in October, on October 9th, 2007, like right before the financial crisis and just held it, you would be up 200%. So the end of 2021 but if you would have sold it at the worst time which was march 2009 you would have lost like over 55 percent so 
History tells us that being passive is usually the best choice, but you also want to kind of map out what you would do in different scenarios. So if the crypto market as a whole crashed 10%, what would you do? 25%, what would you do? 50%, what would you do? And that way you have a game plan going into it. You can reduce randomness of making an impulse decision. And also just the mental side of investing, which is super important. I think we're all human is it'll make you feel better, make you feel more in control of what you're doing and kind of just help you endure through that crash. You know, the U.S. stock market and crypto so far have been incredible long-term investments and really the price of admission to tap into those long-term gains is stomaching the volatility, is getting through the downturn. So that's just what it takes and the better you can prepare for that, the better chance you'll have to just stay the course. So what you're trying to say is take emotion out of it trust why you bought into an investment and remember that investing is a long-term process? Yeah, the investment thesis for stocks and I think even more so for Bitcoin and Ethereum is just decades from now. I mean, we're still at the point where what projects are being built on Ethereum's blockchain aren't really being used for the common person. They're kind of still these vague ideas of, of what could be. And a lot of economies still aren't really using Bitcoin to its full utility. So if it was a baseball game, we're probably still in like the late first inning, maybe early second inning. So it's just this ultra long term time horizon where on a on a chart, it can just look insane in the short term. But I think that that blockchain technology is is really a game changer. I think that there's a lot of other projects that are doing interesting things, too, like Cardano and Solana. And it's just important to Focus on what you can control, which is basically your allocation and what weightings you want to have and the decision of dollar cost average over time, and what percentage that is, and just kind of keep up to date with how projects are developing, what regulatory policies get implemented and things like that. But just remembering why you bought the asset in the first place, why you're there, why you got into it. If it's to trade and make a quick buck, then you're probably doing it for the wrong reasons. But if you really know the long-term thesis of something like Bitcoin and you're comfortable owning it for decades and probably dollar cost averaging even more of our time, then I think that's just going to be another exercise you can do to help yourself through a sell-off.